In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Bible study. Thank you for all your children. Thank you for the servants of the Lord, ministers of the gospel, and our leaders in the community who are here. Lord, we pray today you send forth the power of the word in every life in Jesus' name. I will pray that this word will be fire in our bones. It will set us on fire. It will make us to be on fire for the Lord in Jesus' name. Burn every chaff out of our lives. And Lord, move us on to go and do your work in a way we've never done it before. Help us to stand fast and to stand firm. And to keep on moving forward in the things of the Lord in Jesus' name. Bless everyone hearing the word together with us today. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. We're coming to First John chapter 4. For the many feet of those who are with us for the first time, we study through the Bible. And this time we're studying from the first epistle of John, the beloved uh, to the church. I will study chapters 1, 2, and 3. And today we're looking at uh, chapter 4. And I want to plead with you if um, anything comes out of the word of God that happens to you, correct whatever it is in your life or it is in your family or whatever corrects anything in any area of your endeavor here on earth, understand? By just studying from chapter to chapter and it happens that here is where we are today. We're looking at chapter 4 verse 1. It says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Verse 4. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. I will overcome. And then it says, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. In verse 6, we are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that knoweth not God heareth us not. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. That's, uh, those are the verses we are studying today. I'll tell you verses 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. You will see at the end of verse 6 it says, Hereby know we the spirit of truth. And the spirit of error. Then you see in verse 1 it says, Beloved, believe not every spirit. Because he's telling us that all spirits are not the same. Some yield to the spirit of truth. Others yield to the spirit of error. And he says, we should try them. We should test them. And we should examine them. And see which one is of the truth. And which one is of error. Why? Why do I have to try them? Why do I have to test them? Why is that important? Why don't I just read my Bible? And why don't I just embrace everybody that also carries the Bible like me and mentions the name of Jesus like me? And let's all say, just love each other. And whatever you say, whatever I say, there's no examination at all. You see what Jesus said? He said, ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Therefore, it's very important for me to know the truth if I want to be free, free in my Christian life. If I want to be free from, from every yoke and every chain and every shackle, if I want to be free, free from the things, invisible things that might bind me, if I want to be totally free, I'm free to do the will of God. I'm free to fulfill the purpose for which here God has sent me to the world. I need to know the truth. I need to believe the truth. I need to observe the truth. I need to understand it. I need to believe and know that truth. And then move on in the freedom that the truth of the Lord and the truth of the gospel gives me. That's why it says in verse 1, Beloved, he loves us. 
And because he loves us, because we're born again, we're begotten, you are begotten, you are beloved. And because he has loved us so much, he wants the very best for us. And he wants the greatest of things for us. And because of the greatest of things, he wants for us, the reason he's saying, beloved, believe not every spirit. You see, there are people that are simple-hearted and they are kind of a vulnerable and they're soaking everything and they're taking everything and they accept everything and whatever it is that comes to them that's what they take and that's why it's saying beloved you're going to watch beloved you're going to look at your life beloved you're going to see when you hear the truth and when you are taught the word of god not just to say yes i accept whoever is talking and whatever is being said i accept it says believe not every spirit is telling us that there are people we cannot believe there are people we must not believe there are people we must not yield our ear our mind our attention to it says believe not every spirit because it says look at that verse one but try the spirits try the spirit that means you're testing them that means you are trying them that means you are examining them that means you want to find out is that from the holy spirit is that from the human spirit or is that from a haughty spirit or is that from the powers of darkness you want to find out that's why it's saying believe not every spirit because you try there whether they are of god and it tells us at the end of verse one it says because because many false prophets are gone out into the world you see that it says many false prophets are gone out into the world you know sometimes when you point out that there are people that are quick to say ah they don't have love because if they had love they'll accept everybody embrace everybody love everybody and they will not be saying that some people are false prophets in the world you want to understand that this apostle is the apostle of love if anybody ever spoke about love among all the disciples and the apostles of the lord jesus christ it's john because he's the one that said that god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life is the only gospel writer among matthew mark luke and john only the only one that says a new commandment i give unto you that she love one another as i have loved you by they shall all men know that ye are my disciples if ye have loved one towards another is the only apostle that tells us the model of love and it says hereby perceive with the love of god because he gave his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren he's only one that says for god is love and if god has loved us so much then we need to love one another and it is this apostle of love think about that it is this apostle of love that says beloved believe not every spirit but try the spirits whether they are of god because many false prophets have gone out into the world and it says we need to discern we need to differentiate we need to distinguish between the spirit of truth and the spirit of error that's why tonight as we look at this passage i'm talking to you on rejecting error and embracing the truth rejecting error and embracing the truth already you can see from what he's saying when he said beloved believe not every spirit but try but test but examine the spirits whether they are of god because many false prophets are gone out into the world hereby hereby know ye the spirit of god every spirit is now telling us how to examine them how to try them how to find them out how to be able to discover and discern and distinguish which one is the spirit of truth and the spirit of error it says hereby know ye the spirit of god every spirit that confesses that jesus christ is come in the flesh is of god is telling us that there are people that may just mention jesus but they have different ideas about jesus and about christ and about jesus christ and he tells us every spirit 
that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And we call that in theology, Christology. What that means is Christ came and Christ lived. He lived a perfect life. Anybody that confesses that, he lived a righteous, spotless, sinless life. Anybody that confesses that, he lived a life irreproachable. He lived a life spotless and sinless. He lived a life that was perfect. Anybody that confesses about Jesus Christ, he came, and then he gave himself, and then he paid for our ransom. He paid for our redemption. He, prayed, he paid for our salvation. And he said, this is the blood of the New Testament which is shed for you for the remission, removal, and the cleansing from all sin. It says, those who confess Christ in his entirety, those who confess Christ in his completeness, those who confess the virgin birth of Christ, the spotless life of Christ, and the redemption of Jesus Christ, and the death of Jesus, and the resurrection of Jesus, and the Jesus that is coming again in power. Those who confess what Christ stands for, he says, that is the spirit of the Lord. Then he goes on to say, verse 3, and every spirit that confesses not Jesus Christ, that is come in the flesh, is not of God, and that is the spirit of, tell me, Antichrist, anti means, uh, that doesn't mean your auntie or your uncle, anti means opposed to. That means, uh, if uh, somebody does not confess the virgin birth of Christ, the spotless life of Christ, and the necessity of Christ's redemptive atoning blood. If anybody does not confess all that Jesus made, all that Jesus taught, all that Jesus came for, and the purpose, the reason for which Jesus came, if somebody does not confess Christ in his totality, he says that's the spirit opposed to Christ, and it's of the Antichrist. Wherefore, ye have heard that it should come, and even now is it in the world. And then he says, ye are of God. Thank God not everybody is in error. I am not in error. I say thank God not everybody has gone with the spirit of the Antichrist. Thank God there are people that stand. They stand for Christ. They stand by Christ. They stand with Christ and they stand in Christ. And I pray you'll be one of them in Jesus name. It says ye of God, little children, and have overcome them, will be overcomers. You see, when you know Jesus who Jesus is, and you allow Jesus to be everything you ought to be in your life, that's how the victory will come. That's how the triumph will come. That's how you become the victor, and it says we'll overcome them because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. They is talking about the false prophets that he mentioned in verse 1. They is talking about the people that do not confess, do not believe the fullness, the totality of Christ. They is talking about people who are preachers, but they do not know neither the law nor the grace of God. But he's saying they are the world. Therefore, speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. I'm part of that number. We are of God, he that he that knoweth God, heareth us. He that knoweth not knoweth God not, heareth us not, hereby perceive we the spirit of truth and tell me the spirit of error, rejecting error and embracing the truth. There are three things we're going to talk about. Number one, perilous perversion by false prophets. Perilous perversions by false prophets. Number two, prevailing power over their faulty pretenses. Prevailing power over their faulty pretenses. And number three, proper perception by faithful people. Proper perception by faithful people. Number one, perilous perversion. By false prophets. I'm reading from verses 1, 2, and 3. That's uh, this, uh, First John chapter 4. It says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they be of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Here is the apostle of love. Warning us, well, you love your children. If you love your children, you'll warn your children of danger. 
You want your children a poison. You tell your children it's not everything that looks like good liquid in the bottle. You just open and drink. Look at the label and look at all the composite things that make up that liquid in that bottle you make your child to be able to see very well and say don't just open every bottle and begin to drink some bottles contain poison the same thing you, you tell your people it's not everything like choosing a food you're going to put in your mouth there are some things that are going to destroy you there are some things that are going to just lead you astray might even take your life and you say it's not every stranger you meet on the street that you say i'm your friend i want you to be my friend it's not everyone like that you're going to embrace and love you tell people like that the people you love and that's why this john the beloved because of his love and because he loved christ he loved the people of christ he loved the followers of christ he loved the flock the flock of the lord that's why he's saying our beloved children of god you are born again your children of god and you're on your way to heaven there's something here now believe not every spirit and if you are going to believe somebody what do you do you test them you examine them and you see there are people that don't want you to ever try them and they're very quick to tell you jesus said judge not so if um, anybody comes just accept what they say because you know jesus just said that they all may be one and that the father may be glorified when we are all one you're telling me one side of the story you see a coin has two sides one side of the coin is judge not what's that saying it's saying that in normal life in normal interaction normal behavior somebody is doing something don't judge him to be wrong don't judge him to be an enemy you know you can relate with people normally but then the other side of the coin is that jesus said beware of you know that what is this what did he say Beware of false prophets. And then he said, ye shall know them by their fruits. Jesus said that. And Jesus even said, not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, shall come into the kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God. But they that do the will of my father, which is never. He said, on the final day, many will say unto me. And they said, they have done many wonderful works in your name. They are prophesied and they have cast out devils. And he will say, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that walk in equity. That's the other side of the story and he looked at his disciples and he said beware of the leaven of the pharisees that's warning when you love people you will want them that's why paul that's why the apostle here john said beloved believe not every spirit and but try the spirits whether they are of god because many false prophets have gone out into the world actually when you look at that uh, statement of scripture and the command of scripture that says try the spirits test the spirits and examine the spirits and see what which is good and then you hold on to that which is right and you find that it's not just in first john alone it's uh, even from the old testament i'm looking at deuteronomy chapter 13 Deuteronomy chapter 13 and here we're reading from verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 13 we're looking at it from verse 1. It says if there arise among you think about that it's not you know sometimes when we're talking about false prophets people are looking at people from outside they are coming to us from outside and they are bringing their literature they are bringing their tapes they are bringing this and that and they were suspicious and we're not good he said now if there arise tell me the next two words there among you among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and give us thee a sign or a wonder and the sign of the wonder come to pass whereof he speak unto thee see let us go after other gods which thou hast not known or let us serve them it says thou shalt not hearken unto the words of the prophet you see that it says if somebody is telling you another way of salvation another way of redemption if somebody is telling you about another jesus that will you know bring your life and bring you this and that and a person is telling you about another way another way to heaven and the word of god says there's no other name 
by which you can be saved except the name of Jesus. This person then that comes and said, let us go after other gods which thou hast not known. Let us serve them. It says, thou shalt not hearken to the words of that prophet. I will not hearken. Or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God proves you. For the Lord your God tries you. For the Lord your God is trying to know whether you will love him and love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Look at verse 4. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his word and ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. You see, that's what the word of God says. Now look at verse 5. You need to understand this, uh, verse 5, very well. Are you there? But chapter 13 of Deuteronomy, verse 5, is that where you're looking at? Okay, let me read it to you and explain. It says, uh, that and that prophet, or that dreamer of dreams, shall be what? What? put to death and why because he has spoken to turn you away from the lord your god which brought you out of the land of egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage to thrust thee out of the way which the lord thy god commanded thee to walk in so shall thou put evil away from the midst of it look up here for a moment many people as they read that verse 5 they don't they, they don't understand and they say how could anybody be that strange look at this ordinarily that somebody comes to you and he says worship idol and he says bow down to idol and he says make an idol ordinarily somebody comes to you and he says this is what you do and he tells you and he tells your family, tells your wife, tells your children, and tells the people under your influence. And he says, come serve other gods. Before I tell you the reason why God said, it is, this is what they should do. What that meant for the children of Israel is he called them out of Egypt, out of bondage. They had been in that bondage for 430 years almost. And because of the love of God, he called them out of the bondage. And he said, I prepared a land for you. And the land is filled with milk and honey. And now somebody comes to them to derail them, to lead them astray. If that happened and they accepted that, God had threatened that anybody that worshipped idol, I delivered you and your God. I delivered you and your father. I delivered you and your redeemer. I have a good purpose for you. I'm taking you to the land of promise. And if they worshipped idol, they would all die. Don't you remember the time when the whole nation, we're talking about three million people. When they worshipped idol and Aaron raised up the molten calf for them, God said, Moses, leave me alone. I will destroy all of them. They will not get to that land of promise. I will kill them. Now, that's the danger they face. Because you see, a little fire that starts in one family can so spread and then spread to all the people. And if somebody came to you, take Aaron, Aaron. If anybody comes to you and he says, oh, make us gods, make us an idol that we may follow. Because as for this Moses, we don't know what has happened to him. Aaron, you know what you have to do? Put him to death. How can you be so strict? Because if you do what this man is telling you to do, you will put the whole nation as the priest, the high priest, you put the whole nation into jeopardy and destruction and danger, the peril of death. That's why it was that serious. Now, for us today, we don't put anybody to death. You know what we do? We count him as dead. We don't talk to dead people. 
We don't interact with dead people. We don't socialize with dead people. We don't befriend dead people. We don't go to the graveyard. The man is dead. And we don't go there. And then we say, I want to ask advice from you. I want to ask some counseling from you. I want you to help me. I'm thinking about this. If somebody comes, it comes with a dream. It comes with a vision. And it comes with an instruction. It comes with counseling. And the counseling is to lead you away from the way, the truth, and the life. And it's to lead you away from the spirit of truth. It says, count him dead. Count him dead. And you're not going to allow the dead to influence your life. You know, somebody might have been your friend and the friend is dead. And when the friend is dead, you're not going to the grave and communing with the dead, even though he was your friend. Or maybe somebody was, uh, you know, a relative. And this relative physically is dead. You don't go to him and then you're asking for counseling. And you're saying, we used to talk together. We used to commune together. And he used to advise me. I used to advise him. And the fellow is dead now all communication is come to an end all interaction is come to an end that's why the lord is saying if somebody comes to you the fellow is backsliding already and the fellow is an apostate already and the fellow is in error already and the fellow is in false doctrine already no matter how close that person might be to you count him as dead i pray that god will give you the grace in jesus name we're looking at jeremiah chapter 29 jeremiah chapter 29 i'm reading from verse 8 jeremiah chapter 29 and we're reading here from verse 8 it says for thus says the lord who is speaking to us here I said who is speaking to you here. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you, neither hearken to your dream uh, to your dreams which ye cause to be dreamed. You see that is telling us that you're not listening to those diviners. You know, in our community here, somebody here is, uh, you know, and uh, they said it's one woman that she, if you need or uh, whatever, she will rub oil on your stomach and then you'll be pregnant. Uh, those are the first people the Bible is talking about. They say there's somebody there that if you go there, you, you, you put your head down like this, you'll wash your head with one kind of water and bad luck will go. Well, those, that's what we're talking about they said there's somebody there that you know will give you something to chew and wants to chew that thing and you swallow that thing they say you know every sickness hiv aids everything will pass away they say there's somebody there that you know he does this he does this that's what the lord is telling us he said those people are false tell me i said those people are false are you not are you not sure am i with you are you with me there i said they are false Therefore, therefore, that's why you're not listening to them. They might carry Bible. You know, some people, uh, they like to deceive. They carry Bible and then they wear this, they wear that. And then they might, uh, you know, speak some, some words that, you know, when you hear them pray and when you hear them mention the name of God and they begin to tell you about the titles of God, about the authority of God, about the anointing of God, about all these things. The ears of your head will just stand up like this and say, huh, there is a spirit of God here. Uh, uh, don't be carried away. Don't be carried away. Some of those idol worshippers, you see them dancing and spinning and rolling. You're seeing that there's something supernatural here. It's a supernatural power of the devil. They will not pray for me. I said they will not pray for me. You know, even if you're sick, if you're, who knows the last sickness somebody is going to have before he dies. If you're sick and then Jesus decides he wants to take you to heaven. I think that is wonderful. I said, I think that is wonderful. Rather than allowing a messenger of Satan to lay hands on you and then they pass evil spirit into your life and then you begin to have some dreams and say, what kind of thing is this? Since that man laid hands on you, can you see what is happening? Remove your head from them. They will not lay hands on you. So that all their evil speed will not pass unto you in Jesus' name. Uh, look at look at verse 9. It says, For they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, says the Lord. I pray that God will give you wisdom. 
Matthew chapter 24. In Matthew chapter 24, here we're reading from verse, we're reading from verse 5. Matthew chapter 24, here are the words of Jesus Christ himself. This is our Savior and this is our Lord. Look at the warning the Lord himself is giving us. Matthew chapter 24, I'm reading from verse 5. It says in verse 5, for many, many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. And shall, what will they do? Deceive many. You know, you, you are thinking, if anybody got up today, and the fellow announces and says, hey, everybody here in our area locality, Christ has come back. I am Christ. Now, those of you that know the truth, you just walk past by, because you know, that's a lie, but you'll be surprised. You'll be surprised. There'll be people that will stand there, they say, I want to hear more. I want to hear more. And Jesus said, at the time of the end, and we're getting to the time of the end, it says many will come, and they will say, I am the Christ, and you'll deceive many. Well, you see those people, uh, those who are deceived, maybe they are not, they really didn't know any Bible, they didn't really know anything, they didn't know how to measure the ministry of Christ. Look at verse 24. It says, for there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show, tell me, tell me, tell me, they shall show great signs and wonders. You know, there are people, anywhere they see a miracle, they say, ah, God is here. Not everywhere you see miracle. You see, sometimes healing uh, can carry you away. All those things in the papers can carry you away. And then the news, uh, come and see, come and see. This person, see what the problem I had before. I just got there and that prophet laid hands on me. And this is what happened. Maybe that is true because Jesus said that they will show great signs and great wonders. Then it says, in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive who? The very elect. And then Jesus said, behold, I have told you before to be forewarned is to be to be forearmed. And because of that warning, we're not going to be deceived in Jesus' name. And we're looking at uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, we're reading from verse 21. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and we're reading from verse 21. It says in verse 21, prove all things. You see that? That's Paul the Apostle. Inspired by the Spirit of God, he said, Don't just believe everything everybody said. Don't just believe every text they sent to you. And don't just believe every email they sent to you. And don't just believe every television program you see. Don't just believe everything you hear over the radio. Don't just believe everything they say. We're having celebration in our assembly. We're having convocation in our assembly. And in our place, religious event, we're having this thing. And many things are happening. It says, don't just take that hook, line, and sinker. It says, prove all things, hold that fast which is good. And then it says, abstain from all appearance of evil. And you go to an assembly and you see, well, I can't really tell, but this one appears to be evil. This one appears to be occultic. This one appears to be idol worship. This one appears to be false doctrine. It says, abstain from every appearance of evil. I pray the Lord will preserve you. You will not go astray. You will not suck in and you will not swallow evil in these last days in Jesus' name. We're looking at 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. The Spirit speaketh how? Openly, expressly, definitely, explicitly. The Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, what time are we living in now? Latter times, in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of who? Yeah. 
doctrines of devils. Some people feel that every doctrine is all right. That, you know, it depends on their emphasis. They say, Baptist emphasizes that. Assemblies of God emphasizes that. Deeper life emphasizes that. Pentecostal emphasizes that. And that other person, this is emphasis. They do not understand that there are doctrines of devils. And it says, this deal of Arsa, this is spirits and doctrines of devils speaking lies in hypocrisy having their conscience seared with a hot iron i pray they will not deceive you in fact he tells us in second thessalonians chapter 2 second thessalonians chapter 2 i'm reading here from verse 7 it says in verse 7 it says for the mystery of iniquity does already work only he who now let us will let until he be taken out of the way and then he says then shall the wicked that wicked be revealed whom the lord shall uh, consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming even him even him whose coming is after the walking of satan with all power and signs and uh, tell me lying wonders what are lying wonders wonders that deceive wonders that lie wonders they will say they are of christ that's a lie they are satan they will say they are of the truth that's a lie they are of evil they will say it will take you to heaven and then they will say you open your mouth like this when you see some of those things those people do very near magic very near magic and then you think well which other power are we looking for this one is a great power and then you are inviting members of the church you know if you are sick you know we can still be in the church but what we are saying is you can come here because their meetings don't clash with our meeting and they are whatever they do you know we can go there and still be here we can still be here on sunday and still be here on monday and then still be here on thursday and still be here for our workers meeting because the time they, they have a good time and i'm telling you just go there like this and come and see wonders the wonders that deceive i will not be deceived i said i will not be deceived what am i looking for you have the name of jesus and in the name of jesus every knee shall bow you have the power of the holy ghost because with that power of the holy ghost no evil shall be able to stand before you you have the word of god it says the word comes to you and then faith comes to you and this word is fire it will burn every chaff out of your life and then you have the agreement with us here it two of us shall agree as touching anything we ask he will do it for us in Jesus name so with everything we have with everything we possess how do we go to somebody in a corner somewhere that is trying to deceive people lying wonders no lying wonder will catch me I, I'm talking for myself I said no lying wonder will catch me if, if you don't poke nose into you know all their lying wonders if you don't poke nose into all the evil things they're doing uh, by the time i come next i will see you there you'll still be standing you'll be standing fast in jesus name hey, look, look at this look at this i'm going to read that verse 9 again even him who's coming is after the walking of satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they received not the love for the truth that they might be saved for this cause god can, shall send them a strong delusion that they should should believe a lie i will not believe a lie that they all might be damned that believed not the truth but at pleasure in unrighteousness so to come to number two now prevailing power over their faulty pretenses prevailing power over their faulty pre uh, pretenses you'll prevail we're looking at first john chapter 4 verse 4 first john chapter 4 verse 4 it says ye of god little children ye of god little children and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world i want you to look at that very well it says even though you're a little child you have got little children even though you're a baby in christ you have got little children even though you're a new convert you have 
God, little children, even though you have just come and you do not know everything in the Bible yet, but you are born again. You have received Jesus Christ as your personal savior because he said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone opens the door of the heart and then I will come in and I will sup with him. And once he's inside you, he lives inside you. Look at that verse 4 again. Ye of God, little children. And I've overcome them because greater, greater, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Who is the one referred to as in the world? The devil? Anything, any other sin in the world? Demons? Any other sin in the world? Evil powers? Any other sin in the world? Witches and wizards? Any other sin in the world? Powers of darkness? Any other sin in the world? False prophet? Any other sin in the world? Curse? Any other sin in the world? Yoke? Any sin in the world that, that is not in the kingdom of God and is right there in the world. You know, sometimes there are people that say, hmm, the community in which we live, you know, that person is in that corner. That fellow is a great, mighty one. If you say anything and you do anything and you fall into their trap, they say you are gone. Not me. They say the other one is in that corner. The other one is, they say, Pastor, the way we are here in our community here, if we tell you in the four corners, in the north, in the south, in the east, and the west of this our community, if we tell you the people that are there, they say the head of, then they mention that the, they say the head is over here. They say the leader of, then they mention that they say it's over here. They say the, this one, this one, this one, they say it's over here. And they say because of that, you know, it's difficult to live the Christian life here from today it will be easy to live the Christian life because greater is he that is what are you there greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world from today victory from today triumph from today you are an overcomer in Jesus name and look at that verse again because it's talking about prevailing power over their faulty pretenses it says she of God's little children and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I think we need to find out what's that in us? What's that in us? Because if you just say greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world, you may not know how powerful and how mighty you are. I'm looking at First John chapter 2. First John chapter 2 and I'm reading here from verse 13. First John chapter 2 and we're reading here from verse 13. In verse 13 look at what it says. I write unto you fathers because ye have known him that is from the beginning I write unto you young men because, because ye have overcome the wicked one, you will overcome. Look at verse 14. I have written unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong and the word of God abides in you. Now tell me, the word of Jesus or the word of Satan, which one is greater? the word of God that God gave to Moses and declared that before Pharaoh or the word of those magicians in Egypt which one is greater that's the word of God and it says the word of God abides in you this is the word that created the whole universe this is the word that created the whole earth when God said let there be light there was light let this be and it was all he had to do is just speak the word and that mighty word is living inside of you you will be strong I said you will be strong uh, let, let's look when it says a greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world we're looking at Luke chapter 11 Luke chapter 11 and I'm reading here from verse 21 Luke chapter 11 and we're reading from verse 21 Luke 11 and then we read from verse 21 uh, victory has come overcoming life has come and that greater one in you will live big and live strong in your life in Jesus name it says in Luke chapter 11 verse 11 chapter 21 verse 11 when a strong man and keepeth his palace his goods are 
in peace. But when, but when, somebody there, but when, what is stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him. I'm talking about somebody here today. And overcome him, he taketh from him all his armor wherein he trusted and divideth his goods. If the greater one is on the inside of us, we have overcome. And you have overcome in Jesus' name. And when you practice your Christianity, you're not, you know, wrapping your Bible in, uh, you know, paper. And then you say, where are you going? And then you point, I am going there. Where? You're ashamed. You're afraid to say that you're going to church. <laughs> These people around here, if you say you're going to church and then they say which church and you say deeper life, I don't know what they will do. Hey, bring out that Bible. I said, bring out that Bible. If you are coming to a church and they say, where are you going? They'll say, come along. I'm going to deeper life. There's power there. There's anointing there. Every yoke will be broken there. And whether it is Bible story, revival, and every, every time the word of God is there, the fire of God will be there. Every time the word of God is there, authority will be there. Bring them along. And don't just, you know, be hiding your face and hiding your Bible. I stand upright and say, I'm one of the people standing fast. I said, I'm one of the people standing firm. And you will stand in Jesus' name. When a strong man keepeth his palace and here you come and here I come. And if two of us, one shall chase a thousand and two shall put ten thousand to flight. If you and I agree together and we we'll walk around this place, no power will stand before us in Jesus name. The stronger than he will overcome them every time in Jesus name. Because we have him living on the inside of us. Look at John. I'm looking at John chapter 14. He greater is he that is in you. You need to know who is inside you there. In your spirit, your soul, and your mind. We're looking at John chapter 14 verse 17. In verse 17, even the spirit of truth. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. Because it seeth him not neither knoweth him but she know him for he dwelleth with you tell me the rest and shall be in you that's the holy ghost that's power the power of the almighty god the third personality in the trinity that's the lord jesus that's a, a, the holy spirit there and it says it's in you look at verse 20 at that day ye shall know that i am in the father and ye in me and i in you that's okay about jesus christ i in you the redeemer in you the overcomer in you the captain of our salvation in you the conqueror in you the one that never lost any battle in you he lives on the inside of you and because it's on the inside of you you are going to be an overcomer in jesus name look at verse 21 he that has my commandment and keepeth them he it is that loveth me and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father and i will love him i will love him and i and will manifest myself unto him this is your day look at verse 23 jesus answered and said unto him if a man love me he will keep my words and my father will love him and will come unto him and make our abode with him. He makes your heart a sanctuary. He makes you his temple and he lives on the inside of you. And because it's there, your sicknesses are gone. Because it's there, all the yokes are broken. Because he's living on the inside of you, all those activities of a demon spirit, evil spirit, they are totally crushed in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 11. Romans chapter 8, verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. See that? The spirit so powerful. The spirit so mighty and the spirit that is irresistible that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead. First of all, the stone was rolled away. Every stone will be rolled away from your life. 
And then the power of the spirit raised him from the dead. And he said, if that spirit dwells inside you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also, shall also, shall also quicken your mortal body by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Thank God the Holy Ghost is there inside you. And today it will quicken your mortal body. It will shake everything, shake it all out of your life in Jesus' name. When the spirit lives there, and when the spirit is active there, you'll never be the same again. We're looking at uh, Ephesians chapter, Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. Ephesians chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or seek, according to the power that worketh where? That worketh in us. Look at this again. Now unto him that is able. My God is able. I said my God is able. Unto him that is able. Able to do. My God is able to do. What challenge do you have in your life? My God is able to do. What oppression is there? My God is able to do. What need is there? My God is able to do. Exceeding abundantly above all that I ask or see. I said it's me. Above all that I ask or see. According to the power that worketh where? In me. It's going to work tonight. Because that power is there and we have the whole armor of God will destroy every work of the devil in Jesus name. Number one, perilous perversion by the false prophets. Number two, prevailing power over their faulty or false pretenses. Number three, now proper perception by faithful people. We're coming to first John chapter four. First John chapter 4, and we're reading from verses 5 and 6. First John chapter 4, and we're reading from verse 5. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God, he that knoweth God heareth us, and he that is not of God Heareth us not. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Look up here for a moment. He says, the world can be divided into two parts. They are of the world. We are of God. And those two groups of people are different. They're distinct. And you can distinguish them one from the other. And here John is saying, you will know them by what they listen to. You will know them by who they listen to. It says in verse 5, they are of the world. I want you in your own personal life, in your own brief life, in your own little experience, since you became a Christian, or maybe since you came into this world, who can we say they are of the world? Do you know anybody that, you know, as they speak and you are wondering, are not people intelligent? Don't their ears taste or test the word? Don't they understand what this fellow is saying? And sometimes he might even be talking in a way that blasphemes and sometimes he ridicules them. Sometimes he will even do some weird things, some bad, bad things that you'll think that every, any dignified person, any gentleman, any lady will just know, no, I cannot be here. I'm more dignified, I'm more civilized than being in this place. But you're surprised. They're there. And they're rushing there. And they're rushing there. You know, sometimes it's, uh, you know, in some countries, there are some uh, politicians uh, right now that almost everybody will say, why does he talk like this? Why does he talk like this? And yet everybody will be rushing there. They say, come and hear the man. And some of them will say, uh, they pose with them. I want to take photograph with him because, and everybody is saying, why is this man talking like this? And yet there are people that will pose, uh, you know, and say, take my picture because I want to 
identify with this man. That's why it says they are of the world and therefore the world hears them. And sometimes you'll find, uh, you know, there are people in your communities, uh, wherever you are coming from, uh, those people, anywhere you hear their voice or see them, you, you want to stay clear because anywhere they are, there'll be trouble. Anywhere they are, there's conflict. Anywhere they are, fight you'll start. Anywhere they are, broken bottles will be flying here and there. And there are people that will be stretching for their hand. Hey, move on. Great. You're my man. We love you. We love your courage. Have you seen something like that before? They are the world and the world heareth them. And sometimes it's um, you know, people who say it comes to a religious section now and they know them. They can see them. They will dig a hole there and put a live animal inside there and cover it up. And then they will put a signboard there and say here we're calling on the name of God. Here we're worshipping God. And there is a life uh, animal that they you know buried there and they say that all the worms of uh, that animal when it dies over there that will bring all the multitudes of people and you'll be surprised that with all that occultism and with all that evil things there are people that are going there it says they are the world therefore the world is hearing them and sometimes uh, you know we're not we're not near the end of the year now at the end of the year you find the people that they begin to prophesy. They say, this coming new year, this our country will be number one in Africa. And people, uh-huh, there are people there. And then, uh, you know, they write it down. And uh, by, we we'll come to January, we can't see the country being number one in Africa. Economy is going down. And there's no security. And then the following December, these same false prophets, they want to prophesy again and come and see people asking them, what's the prophecy for this year? I'm saying, but the one for last year, nothing came out true. Why see, why see the people are just for now? I understand. They are the world and the world heareth them. You know, if you are not of the world, it will tell by what you hear and what you don't hear. You'll say, no, I cannot hear that. Uh, that one is a preacher for the world. That one, you know, over the television, come and see the tele-evangelists and come and see the lies they tell and come and see the false doctrines they perpetrate and come and see the misinterpretation of scripture that they just just throw into the air and everybody is listening and yet people they are telling each other have you listened to pastor so and so have you listened to evangelist so and so have you listened to prophet so and so and you are wondering what you see there they are publicizing now you understand they are the world therefore the world hears them but thank god i'm not of that number i'm of another number I know it then it says, look at look at this. It's first John now chapter four. I mean in verse six, it says, We are of God. I can tell you, Paul the apostle was of God. I can tell you Peter was of God. I can tell you John the beloved was of God. And all these apostles that have given us the New Testament and Moses and Joshua and David and Samuel and all the people that gave us the Old Testament and these great men of God moved by the Holy Spirit and everything they said was by the Spirit of God. I can tell these are of God and I will listen to them. I said I will listen to them because you see this is a secret that's why John is saying we are of God and he that knoweth God heareth us he that heareth God heareth he that knoweth God heareth us if you're a child of God you will hear the people that are preaching the truth the people that talk about the way of salvation and the people that remind us without holiness no man shall see the Lord and the people that tell us he shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria to the uttermost part of the earth. If you of God you will listen to the people that says for this reason, for this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto how many wives? Tell me out loud now. Just one wife shall cleave unto his wife and that way shall become one flesh. If you have God, you listen to the people that remind us, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And this sign shall follow them. And this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name they'll cast out devils. 
And in my name, they lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And then they take up serpents and throw them away. If they drink any deadly sin, it shall not hurt them. And uh, it says, they shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. And they went forth in the power of the Lord preaching the word and the Lord confirming the word with signs following. I want to tell you that we are of God. And we preach the Bible. We are of God. We believe the Bible. And I'm telling you, if you are not of this uh, assembly yet, if you are not among these people of God yet, I'm calling you to come. And as you come, the Lord will bless you. I'm saying you're welcome. And you will throw in your path with us. And the great things the Lord is doing, uh, the Lord will also confirm it to your life in Jesus' name. Christ will live inside you. God himself will live inside you. The Holy Ghost will live inside you. And the word of power that overcomes and makes us to overcome, that word will also live inside you in Jesus' name. I'm looking at numbers. I'm looking at numbers. I'm looking at this uh, from chapter 10. In numbers chapter 10, uh, and I'm reading from verse 29. Uh, it says, And Moses said unto Obab, the son of Reguel, uh, the Midianite, the Midianite, Moses' father-in-law, were journeying unto the place of the which the Lord said, I will give it unto you. We're on a journey. We're going to the promised land. I said we're on a journey. We're going to the promised land. And the Lord has told us that this year will be the best year we ever lived in our lives. And it is coming true upon your life. In every family, it will come true. In every local church, it will come true. And then in this uh, community, it will come true. And then for Moshe here, I'm saying in a special way, it will come true in Jesus' name. We're journeying unto the place of the which the Lord said, I will give it to you. Come thou with us and we will do thee good. Come thou with us and we will do thee good. Even from tonight, that good thing will begin to happen in your life. Because now ye of God, little children, and you have overcome them. Are you an overcomer already? Yes. Where is the overcomer there? Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. A greater victory has started tonight. Yes. Rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. Rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. Victory, come along with us. Come along with us. The Lord will do you good. We will do you good. This is an assembly where you'll discover every need of your life will be met. It will teach you the word of God and this word of God will make you strong and mighty. And from this time on, good, good things will continue your life in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer.